Like I have a, a movie idea. It's called Zombie Dactyl Quake. Not that I'm going to ever make it, but or I might. I don't know. It's a sci-fi movie, you know, but it's a, you know, it's a guy fracking in, 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 uh, in Lake Charles. And uh, they're like, stop fracking over here, you know, but he doesn't care and he does it anyway. And there's a scientist that knows like there's something's not right and they frack and then they uh, release this like gases and stuff. And they find that there's a, a, a pterodactyl down there that was like preserved. Perfect. And then once it, it, it hits the gas, like, Oh my God, you got to do it. Yeah. And then it goes and it starts flying about <laughs> and it's, you know, starts killing everybody except for this like six year old girl who it befriends. Hey, I'm Armando Leduc, producer, film actor, and owner of Leduc Entertainment. I have chosen a life off the beaten path and wanted to find others that are doing the same. Spaghetti on the Wall is a show based on all of the years that I've thrown spaghetti on the wall and nurtured what stuck. We will share fun stories, ideas, tips, tricks, and more. Welcome to Spaghetti on the Wall. What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Spaghetti on the Wall. Dea, Naif, uh, the reason why we, we don't do this live is so that we can uh, cut out the mistakes. But Makes people sense. say they like the mistakes. Yes. That's people why like people, the mistakes. Yeah, that's why people watch like live, the live ones. Yeah, they like the live. They like the mistakes. Yeah. They, they like the, you know, uh, you know what I really love is uh, in, on, on the, those newscasters when they're cracking up laughing. There's like a compilation on YouTube. I love that. Like where they just can't stop laughing and they're trying to get through it. Mm -hmm. That is my favorite. I think, I think it's just my favorite. Daya Naif mm -hmm. from, I know you lived here. Uh -huh. Daphne, Alabama. But that's where you're from. Yes. Is that where you live now? Sort of. Yes. Yes. I live um, half the time in Daphne, Alabama and half the time here in New Orleans. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And you are a consultant. Yes. Specifically for attorneys. Yes. Talk to me about that. Talk to me. How how did you get into that? Well, I'm uh, a retired attorney. Uh, I guess I could say semi-retired. I do still have my license and uh, consult with other attorneys on uh, cases from time to time. Uh, very specific things when I want to do it, but um, only when I want to do it. And um, I shifted into to coaching mainly, a little bit of consulting, but coaching is, is really the umbrella it's under uh, in 2018, actually. What's the difference? Okay, so coaching, you are in charge, and you get to do the work, and consulting is I'm more coming into your business and telling you what to do. So coaching is more working with you to kind of draw out your own process and your mm. own plan. And so consulting you, is I have the plan, follow this. Yes. That's cool. So you're more of a coach, you, you say? Yes. Um, do you want to get into consulting? I do just a little bit of consulting and that's based on like my background as a business owner. Mm -hmm. So if someone's like really heading down the wrong path then I'm like, okay, look, let's really, let's, let me really like have a heart to heart with you. Let me put on my consultant hat, put on my former business owner, actually still business owner, mm -hmm. just a different business um, hat. And let's really like go through this um, like that. How are people going down the wrong path? Oh boy. <laughs> You know, I can just see them sometimes um, moving too quickly, coming up with an idea um, that, you know, this is like not, not lawyers specifically, um, but maybe lawyers, you know, coming up with something that they're going to spend a lot of money on, they're going to spend a lot of time and energy and bandwidth on, and six or eight months down the line, it's going to run out or not be fruitful, and they're, we're going to be in a, we're basically be in the same spot, and they're just going to be a lot less interested they're going to be tired they're going to be worn out financially worn out energetically um their spouse or um other uh relationships will be drained and they'll be like you know what i really wish someone would have um stopped me and said hey you know what you might want to think about that just a little bit more before you go down that road so how are you doing that you creating a swot analysis is that the first first part? Yes, that's a good tool. So strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Really mm -hmm. like getting in there and, and, and analyzing. And that is kind of a consulting type tool. So doing strategic planning. Uh, a lot of mindset work on the beginning. A lot of visioning. A lot of where you see yourself. Where did you see yourself when you like went to law school? Um, what, um, what visions do you have? Who do you want to serve? What impact do you want to make? Um, and then some people are like you know, I really need to pay the bills right now. I really, I just got out of law school maybe four or five years ago. The loans are still killing me, et cetera, et cetera. So really like meeting someone where they are 
getting the immediate goals, the long-term goals, and, and like everything in between. How are you different than other, I guess, coaching and consultants? Um, mainly the, the law firm specialty, like mm-hmm. the lawyer and law firm specialty. I do work with lawyers who are in firms as well as solos in different stages of their careers. Um, having the legal background, having been a practicing attorney, um, and then also really that individualized um, practice. So I don't lay my materials on them. You know, I'm not with a big franchise outfit. Um, don't have a huge subscription model with a whole bunch of tech components and marketing components that is already built in. Um, we work with, you know, what they need. You know, partners such as such as yourself. You know, if we need some some people to talk about what you do, um, then I'm happy to you know introduce you. It's just what they what they need, and we we build it as opposed to fit them into something that's already built. So you're building their necessities, mm-hmm. their necessities, their process, their plan, their relationships. Like, what do they want their associates to look like when they start hiring associates? Like, what does their firm look like? two years, three years, five years, when they retire? Mm -hmm. How do they want to exit their firm? What is their legacy? Do you have, like, a guarantee? Guarantee is a tricky thing in our business. Yeah, because with coaching, you were doing the work. So you really have to put stuff into it. I do guarantee to show up on my end and provide them with whatever, whatever we've agreed to from the outset. So we do a lot of digging on the front end. Gotcha. So, um, and how long does that digging usually take? Um, digging, I do a, a free initial consult, which is usually about 45 minutes to an hour. And then we set up um, an hour and a half to two hour initial kickoff plan. Um, and then we meet, um, depending upon what they need, um, for about every two weeks for half an hour to 45 minutes for six months to a year. What's your type of client? I mean, I know the attorneys, but mm-hmm. I'm saying it specifically, like, who, who do you gel with? Oh, excellent. Um, as far as, I guess I would have to go with what I've done so far. Uh, I've set up a couple of family firms. Um, so far, those have been women who've left other firms to set up family family law firms. Um, I set up an appellate firm, um, someone who left big law and does appellate work, um, which is a little bit specialized because their work comes from from other attorneys and it's very specific subject matter. Mm-hmm. Um Other attorneys I've worked with, people who've had um, crisis in law, like they've like, I'm out of here, I don't want to do this anymore, Um, taken a break and gone back into creating something that would work for them, Um, sort of re-engaging with it, like redesigning sort of a a second career back within their primary career. And those are always very interesting and definitely a lot of mindset work, a lot of um, rebuilding, being creative. Um, learning what the possibilities are, uh, reestablishing relationships. So, what do you mean reestablishing relationships? Um, sometimes when you take a break from a profession or you switch professions, then you haven't been doing your networking. You haven't been going to the things that you need to go to. You haven't been keeping a name for yourself. So that kind of thing. Gotcha. So I want to grow my business. Mm-hmm. What do I need to do? Set up a consult. Okay. So this is the consultation. Okay, great. What's going on? What's going on? So we look at where you're at mm-hmm. and start to analyze like what your what your value what your values are, the values of the people you serve or the clientele that you serve, mm-hmm. and then how you're going to deliver that value, and how you're going to inform the people of how you deliver that value. So whether you need marketing, sales, this kind of process. Um, and then how you're going to deliver the services. So what you need in the back end, the infrastructure. So um, do you have people answering the phones? Do you have people, how do you do, you do all your own work product? Mm-hmm. Um, how long is that sustainable? What's it going to look like when that's not sustainable? How are we going to start creating those processes for later on? And then what's your, you know, what's your big picture? Like what, do, what does this look like a year from now, two years from now? And are we heading, are we heading in that direction? Talk to me about processes uh, or processes, processes processes and procedures. Mm -hmm. Um, How are you, where are people usually housing these, um, I guess their, their operations manuals and um, how, how are you putting that together or are you just telling them how to put it together? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's a good question. You'd be surprised how many people don't have this kind of thing, really. 80%, I'd say, don't. Yeah, probably more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. So how, where, where, where are you putting them? Yes. Um, being, like, real with it. Being Starting out almost like how you would with a with a contract that was like brand new blank sheet of paper. It's mm-hmm. like, what do you what do you want? Like, what are we trying to achieve here? Um, and then you're going to want to um, test it. You know, you're going to want to beta test it a couple of times. Like you work through it. You like act like you're a brand new hire and you walk through your processes mm. and see how they're going to work. Does it make any kind of sense? <laughs> per, I guess, job title. Mm-hmm. And then once it's done, where are you housing it? Um, so that it's accessible to mm-hmm. the, um, the hires, I guess. They usually come with their preferred, the client usually comes with their preferred software. So Google Docs, um, Zoho, um, if they're using practice management software and document management software, things that they've kind of already vetted. Uh, if they don't have anything, I can certainly point them in directions and give them uh, people to contact for demos. What are some people you recommend? Um, so I've, I have, uh, I know reps at uh, Clio, Practice Panther, um, I also know people who um, are consultants, outside consultants for those people who like help you set up your whole system. So those are kind of all within my, all within my network. So when somebody needs something, I hop on, you know, LinkedIn and um, go, okay, who have I talked to lately? And um, I'm like, okay, yeah, because I'm, I'm kind of a visual person. So gotcha. I'm running through my pictures on LinkedIn, I'm like, oh, that's who I'm thinking of. What, what would you say is one of the biggest problems that um, that business owners are facing? Mm-hmm. I know there's a lot, but what are some of the big, <laughs> what are some of the big ones? Um, well, there's a concept of time and mm-hmm. time management and lack of time. And so that's a major context that I run into, especially people in my industry. Yeah. That, um, so I'm competing not only with time management, I'm competing against a billable hour construct. So when I'm asking someone to meet with me, I'm not also I'm not only asking them to invest their time and their money meeting with me. I'm also asking them to give up a billable hour. Right. Yes. Yeah. So we really have to look at the big picture on what the return on investment is. So that's a um, something that's you know on me. It's on me to show them the value. Um, but I believe that our our industry as, as coaches and and, the, and business consultants as well have made that. I think we've we've started to make the inroads on that. It's getting cited by a lot of credible sources and the people who've gone through programs are giving testimonials. And that's great. Yeah, I, I 100% believe in in mentorship and consulting and coaching and a hundred percent. Sometimes, sometimes all you need to do is hear it out loud, you know, or sometimes you just need permission. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like sometimes we're just sitting in this situation where we're just like, man, if somebody just told me it was okay to do, you know, and then it's like, Oh, okay. I can, you're right. I can move forward on that. Mm -hmm. Like why, why, why have I not, you know, and maybe getting out of your own way as to why you're not, I mean, I have that all the time with, you know, with content marketing and, you know, in my business, it's like trying to convince people that, Hey, this is, you know, this is the future this is what we're supposed to be doing. How do you get over the imposter syndrome? How do you get over, you know, my voice doesn't sound good or my, you know, I don't really want to, you know, put myself out there like that, you know, and then I go, you know, it's really not about that in particular. It's about the consistency over time. Right. And marketing works because we're consistent, right? Not necessarily because we're trying to be, have that perfect piece of content that goes out that we think is going to go viral, which (laughs) almost never does. And it's the things that we think are like trash that like all of a sudden get like the most views and you're like, wait, what, what happened? You know? And I I was telling somebody else the other day, I was like, man, if, if, if we knew what was going to go viral, I mean, we'd be multi-billion trillionaires, right? Cause we could just know exactly what's going out there, but you know, Hollywood can't even figure it out. But what they do is over time, if they put out enough content, they're going to get that, you know? So I, I think that in terms of consulting and coaching, I feel like it's the same thing, right? Like it's, mm-hmm. it's one of these things that has to be consistent. Like, I don't think you can get any results meeting with somebody once, mm-hmm. you know, or even once a month, you know, like I think it's that, that consistency and like, let's meet every week, 
really start, you know, putting in those those processes and procedures and how is it that we're going to get to where we need to be. I We started a week ago doing our morning meetings, which we had, we had done here and there, but like we started like legit every morning at nine o'clock, everybody that's in the organization, Colorado, Kansas, Atlanta, you know, California here, you know, India. And it was like, we have everybody on the zoom and we're like, what's going on? We're talking, you know, talking to everybody. And I think things have just been moving so much more smooth as a result. Um, so I think that that goes into what you're saying as far as like consulting and coaching is concerned. It's like, if you don't have someone that's like coaching you on another level, how can you really get to that next point? Right? Like, I mean, we can't see the forest through the trees cause we're, you know, caught up in our own thing. Yeah. We're stuck in here. Yeah. Always. So it's, so I know you talk about mindset work. Talk, talk to me a little bit more about mindset and how do you get people, you know, just out of, just out of their, uh, out of that rut, you know, mm-hmm. that sometimes they're just like the same old thing, same old thing, same old thing. How do you get it? How do you get them out of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish it was just that twist. Like, yeah. Wouldn't it be great? <laughs> be like, all right, now nah, you're good. You're good. Yeah. We really have to pull back you know, really have to look at people's values, like what makes them tick, like how are they connected with the greater, the greater good, the greater universe, like what, what is it with them? Like what's not, um, yeah, absolutely. We want to build our business and make a bigger impact and and make more client, have more clients and, and this and that. Why, you know, why, like what's the, what's the, what's the greater purpose? Like what made you want to do this when you were you know, 20 years old and getting out of college and you're like, okay, I'm going to go spend a quarter million dollars on this next step of my education. Is that how much it costs? Roughly. Yeah. Man. Um, a grueling three years of my life, Oof. three or four years of, of my life. And, um, and, and what, and what for, you know, what for? So what made you choose then to do it that you're not looking at now? Yeah. You forget. You forget. You absolutely forget. Yeah. So funny this past weekend, I had an epiphany. I had an epiphany at Ethan. I, t- I think I told you about it, but it's just, it's that whole doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. <laughs> it's that autopilot, you know, thing. And it's to your point about, you know, values. I think we always start with good intention and then just like, <laughs> like just stop. Like for instance, I, you know, at this grocery store, I'm like buying all kinds of greens and vegetables and all of that. And then two weeks, three weeks later, I'm throwing away 60 to $70 worth of food. And it just goes, it goes to waste, you know? And I have no plan or had, I had no plan on how I'm going to consume this food, right? It's just in there. I'm not at home all the time. So why was I thinking? So the the intentions are there. Like I need more fruit. I need more veggies. I need, you know, Mm -hmm. I need to not be spending money out, you know, buying, buying food when I have food in the grocery store, but uh, at home, but then I'm not incorporating that into Mm -hmm. my life. So the the epiphany was without a plan, I'm going to be lost. Right. And so I, I, I decided like, okay, at night, plan my day tomorrow, right? Get my gla- gallon of water. Um, as you can see over there, it's, it's you know, it was, it was full. I'm, I'm working through it. I'm going to get through the gallon today, but that's because I was intentional last night about setting it up, mm-hmm. you know, and then, you know, putting all of my food in, you know, my little Yeti container and then like just making sure that I had all of that stuff and then my, my workout clothes. So after my morning meeting, I popped over to the gym, did my workout, came back, you know, and I'm, and I'm good. I'm, I'm there. And I was a lot of times thinking about, oh man, if I go work out in the middle of the day, then it's like throwing my whole day off. But I know I find that sometimes I'm just working and I'm busy, (laughs) but I'm not busy, right? I'm not being effective. I'm not being productive. So if I can be incorporating things like working out and my health and all of that, like that's the most important things. Like that is the priority. And then everything else is secondary. Mm -hmm. But the thing is like, I have so much energy today because I did that, that everything else is like working a lot more smooth. My brain is working smoother. All of that's working more smooth. Right. So all that to say is that the plan that I did last night, 
that I wasn't doing. So I will absolutely be doing that again tonight is like, Hey, why don't you set yourself up for the day tomorrow? That way you give yourself all of the, all of the things that, that you need that are going to keep you on track because guess what's going to knock you off emails, text messages, things that come up, like everybody needs your time. Right. But if you can minimize those distractions and have everything that you need at your fingertips right there, and then you'll make healthier choices, right? You'll make better decisions. Like I'm going to finish this gallon of water, which is awesome. You know what I mean? So yeah, but it was, that was the epiphany today, you know, and, and, and I, I also have mentorship that, you know, I meet with somebody on, on a weekly basis and it's, it is paramount. Like it is, if, if you're listening to this and you don't have a coach, like call Daya, do you talk to anybody besides yes. attorneys? Okay, great. You know, get yourself somebody that you can talk to that, knows how to like at least guide you in the right direction you know and and really be able to listen and not just listen but like provide you with some action items mm -hmm. i think a lot of guru you know what good <laughs> lord there's so many consultants and coaches out there these days but you know i there's very little of them that actually can provide results you know so um day is great so let's continue talking about I just my little tangent. It's my little tangent. Yeah, so. But um <laughs> but uh yeah, but um talk to me about mindset, you know, and and like how what are some like practice tools or 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 things that you incorporate into and so sort of that 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 mindset stuff that like is actionable that maybe somebody can take away from this uh podcast. Yeah. Well, I hope everybody was listening to your plan because that was actually a great epiphany. And I'm glad you finished that story because I was like, oh, oh, let's get a plan going for Armando. Yeah, that's a plan. <laughs> yeah, I got a plan. I got a plan. You got to work the plan. Yeah. Yes, I love it. Like, Let me help you with those, um, <laughs> those vegetables. I know all about it. <laughs> so. Dude, it's I, I threw it away and I'm just like. I hate myself. Mm -hmm. I, I like I hate myself as I'm throwing it away. I'm like, you had the best intentions. Why didn't you do it? When oh, that's great. It. So the pain of you having to do that was an impetus for your change. It was. Pain was, yeah, pain's a good teacher. It I is. say that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I there was, you know, I was listening to Tony Robbins. He's got a um he's got a, a, a an amazing set of um, I think it was like a seven day thing. It's a cut cutting edge, cut get the edge. It's called get the edge. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and one of the things that he talks about is, you know, getting disgusted because mm -hmm. like change doesn't happen until you become disgusted with whatever it is that you're disgusted with, you mm -hmm. know? So yeah, I'm, I was definitely disgusted by that, you know, and I went to Chipotle and I had a nice healthy meal mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm okay with having spent that money on eating out because I'm not going to keep going to the grocery store and wasting my money. Cause I know I don't have the time, mm -hmm. you know, unless I get m my meals prepped from somebody, you know, maybe that's, maybe that's another idea, you know, where I can get it prepped, you know, and then food prep. Cause like, I'm, I'm that person that's like, I'm just working and working. Mm -hmm. And if I have it there, that's what I'm going to reach out to. I'm just going to reach and just, you know, eat. So yeah. So options. Extremely impulsive. Absolutely. So looking at options, that's, that's like something that we, we all have to look at. Like what, what's going to work best for us and like what, where's the time money equation, the time energy equation, the, um, variety, like, like I, with food, I love a lot of variety in my food. Yeah. So those, um, people that do that, just the chicken and broccoli every single day, I'm like, Oh no, no, it may be healthy, but that's definitely not going to be for me. But like looking with my clients too, like, so what are, what are the options? So I have the people that are, are more into, um, I guess, to connect this back. So like looking at like what's going to work for them. Like people do have to get a little bit out of their comfort zone, mm. but I'm not going to like drag them completely out of their comfort zone. I'm not going to take someone who is a really good, you know, really good writer, a really good specialist, and I'm not going to make them go become a, um, a keynote speaker. You know, it's not, like, not going to happen. They're going to be like, um, no. Right. <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> so I might have this vision for someone, but that's not the right someone, you know, but I might take someone who, who is so you know, they've, they've worked their way up. They've got these great stories. They're ready to share them. We're going to start with, you know, small groups. We're going to do some women's circles and whatever. And yes, if a book comes out of it or a keynote speaker, that great, you know, it's a natural progression. 
but it's really working on that. Um, but you said getting the mindset. So just kind of starting where you're at, um, active listening, saying, okay, where, where can we go? Where can we follow the breadcrumbs? Where can we follow the paths? And then start exploring new paths opening up ideas. Um, this is a real, really, really, really old timey analogy, but way back when they used to have television sets mm -hmm. and you used to have to turn the knob and you get like three channels and you have to turn it real mm -hmm. to get something to come in very clear. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> back in the day. And then fast forward, like, I don't know, 15, 20 years, something like that. They came up with satellite dishes and they were huge and you would just beam it out and mm -hmm. you could get like hundreds of channels. Yeah. And you'd put it in your backyard. Yeah. yeah I remember huge, that. Huge. Absolutely huge. And so thinking of that, so you started with narrow options and narrow possibilities. Like you could only get a little bit of something. You couldn't get it very clearly. Um, and then when you opened up, when you fanned out, when you got something huge, <laughs> you got something huge to work with, there was unlimited you know 600 at that time was unlimited i don't even know what there is now oh um, man i don't want to look at it i don't even think about hundreds it. of thousands yes <laughs> it's, 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 insane. It. it's insane <laughs> you know you can start your own channel now you can yes. start your own network yeah I'll on um roku and amazon and all of that oh uh, okay I'm, I'm looking into it i'm working on it <laughs> perfect I love it. I love it. I, I do have a YouTube channel that's probably, as you, you would probably point out, underutilized. <laughs> as long as people are using it. Yes. Yes. It is. A, it is. A, it does have my stuff. There you it go. My yeah. stuff. That's where you got to so, have your stuff. Got to have your stuff. Um, so, yeah. So looking at, looking at, I mean, first of all, cluing in, there are more possibilities. You don't mm -hmm. have to use the old TV set. And what are those possibilities? Don't you find... Option fatigue oh, when it's too much, mm -hmm. you know, and you're having, I think that that's a, a big piece of my problem is that I just want it all, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I just, I can't do it all. You know, I read a book, uh, the magic of tidying up uh, Marie Kondo. Marie Kondo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was, um, it was good. I've been incorporating that same idea, obviously materials. So I, I go through my closet every time six months and you know if it's bringing me joy or not and I'm like you know what I don't need this right I thank it and then I head it on its way but I've been doing that digitally you know like cleaning up my digital life because okay. I think there's a thing called digital hoarding are you familiar with this it's like hoarding I, just I hoarding yeah. yeah it's 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 like hoarding but like it's the same thing as like people can't get rid of emails and things like that. I mean, have you seen people's, uh, phones? I, I'm not going to put people on blast, but like some people are like, you know, four or five, 6,000 unread emails. And I'm like, how is that possible? Like that would give me so much anxiety. <laughs> like, how do you operate? You know, like, so anyway, but I've been, I've been incorporating this sort of idea of making, you know, just creating this, letting go of things that are not serving me mm -hmm. and going, okay, is this bringing me joy? Why am I, you know, and back to your, the point, why am I wanting to do this idea? Is it just an idea? Mm -hmm. Is this part of an idea that is already in existence and that can support that endeavor, you know? And then that's how I sort of start to like, um, start to prioritize. I read a book, organize your life, the, the idiot's guide to organizing your life. And it was, um, you know, how to like prioritize. And it was like, okay, A's needs to get done now, obviously, mm -hmm. then B's, then C's and then D's, you know? So I've, I've been using that program to like, really like, okay, just knock things off. And then when it gets to D it's like, is this just a concept? Would it be fun to do? Or is it just, you know, what, what is, why, why do you want to have it around? And sometimes I do, sometimes I just like, Oh, that's a real fun, uh, movie idea. Like I have a, a movie idea. It's called zombie dactyl quake. Not that I'm going to ever make it, but or, or am I might, I don't know. It's a sci-fi movie, you know, but it's a, you know, it's a guy fracking in, 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 uh, in Lake Charles. And uh, they're like, stop fracking over here, you know, but he doesn't care and he does it anyway. And there's a scientist that knows like there's something's not right and they frack and then 
they uh, release this like gases and stuff and they find that there's a, a, a pterodactyl down there that was like preserved. Perfect. And then once it, it, it hits the gas, like, Oh my God, you got to do it. Yeah. And then it goes and it starts flying about <laughs> and it's, you know, it starts killing everybody except for this like six year old girl who it befriends and it befriends this uh, six year old girl. It's a, but it's a zombie pterodactyl. That's like wreaking havoc on everybody. Yeah. Because they're fracking. Right? And that's, yeah. So and that's anyway. Message, so it has a social Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's great. It's great. It's a great idea. But what, this is my point, right? It's like, if I have to, <laughs> it, you know, I've got shiny object syndrome. I can't go after everything. So it's there. You know what I mean? For at, at some point, maybe, you know, maybe if I can delegate enough, you know, and then get a writing team like guys, all right, this is the, this is the concept. This is what we need to do, you know, mm -hmm. and then we can make it. So I haven't gotten rid of it completely. Like, obviously I still like to talk about it, but, but that's my point is just, I'm just trying to take things away and mm -hmm. off of my plate as much as possible. So that I'm like, can only focus on the things that really matter and move the needle forward, mm -hmm. you know? So talk to me, you, you, you networking person, you're big, you're a big networking person. You're on BNI. Mm -hmm. Give me some, give me some good networking tips. You or one of my, yes, people. me, <laughs> me, anybody listening. Um, I mean, the biggest pitfall with networking is the, the fall down of follow up. Oh man. I know. It's like, Oh, hit us all where it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's something like only like 9% of people like follow up after the first interaction. Um, so I'm like, oh, wow. So those of us who do the email and then set up the coffee or at least try to set up the coffee are 90% why do people, of the rest. Why do people stop following up? Why, or they, they lack that follow-up? Why, why, why do they do that? Um, the first part of it is, is kind of, there's, I guess there's two parts. There. It's, it's both tedious and overcoming kind of that imposter syndrome part. So mm. Yes, it's definitely tedious. Yes. And definitely uh, imposter syndrome like. But what are some good, so you, so you follow up, obviously. Mm -hmm. You're networking with somebody, right? At the end, and I always, I always liken it to a relationship, right? Like when you're, when, you're, <laughs> when you're dating somebody, like what's the end? The end is probably the act, right? But in business, the end is the transaction. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the sale, right? And I think a lot of times people are just coming out the gate with, I want the sale. I want the sale. I want the sale. And then not, you know, obviously not getting it and getting frustrated by that. Cause that's all they're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, when you're networking, the end result is you want business, right? Mm -hmm. So how are you creating that networking? We both know that at the end, that's what, that's what the, uh, that, that's what it's going to end in. Right. But how are you doing that and, and the follow up up enough so that when that transaction happens, it doesn't feel so salesy. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Cause I think that that's why a lot of people hate the word sales, mm -hmm. right? Cause it feels manipulative. It feels that like sort of, Oh, I got something over on that person. Right. And it's like, Ooh, you know what I mean? So I think that that's why a lot of sales people have that, just had that bad connotation. So how are you when you're networking with someone, how are you doing that so that it doesn't feel so salesy so that at the end, the outcome is still getting that business, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, in my line of work, it's a, it is a relationship process and it just converts from the initial stages of the relationship to the paid <laughs> stages of the relationship. Sure. Uh, so I, I, try to concentrate on nurturing the relationship. So like starting with the, well, starting with meeting the person, having coffee with the person, having a one-to-one -one with the person. Mm -hmm. And if that converts into a consultation where we're actually talking about their business and providing value, you know, I send a written, written report of what we talked about and that provides the value. And well, from, that's that, cool. uh, from that step, then usually we talk about moving on to paid step. So, and then if not, Hey, we're still friends, you know? So you're doing a consultation kind of ahead of time going, all right, this is where you're at. Mm -hmm. This is where you could be. These are your pain points. This is where you're probably lacking. This is how I can help you in that. And then they're like, yeah, mm -hmm. yes or no. Pretty and much. then, or sometimes they're saying no, but that doesn't necessarily mean no 
period. It mm-hmm. just probably means no, not right now. Cause who knows, maybe budget, whatever. Mm-hmm. So, and then that's when, that's when the follow-up continues. Mm-hmm. So how are you following up past that point? Um, when they've already said, maybe I, I, I don't want the services right now. Right. Um, I mean, usually it's some sort of mutual like agreement, like, well, when do you want me to talk to you again? Or when do you want me to follow up? Um, and then since we are now in a relationship, I will send them other things like, oh, you were looking for a salesperson. I just met a salesperson who's looking for someone they, mm. could, they could fit into your industry. That's good value. Yeah. So I continue to refer them a business, um, inquire if they've asked for a service. Um, you know, I recently had somebody ask for um, some website people and I'm like, oh, okay, good. Let me follow up with some website people that I know. So I sent them that, then asked them how it worked out, who they ended up going with. That's cool. So just keeping the conversation going. So you're like, for all intents and purposes, the COO of these businesses. Mm-hmm. Could be, yeah. That could be. That's a good way. That's a, that's a, that's yeah. That's a way of looking at it. So it's like you know, helping with operations, helping with you know. Mm-hmm. You ever read that book, Rocket Fuel? I haven't read that one. No. It's by the same guy that wrote uh, the book Traction. Uh, he has Traction's the EOS, great. yeah, the EOS systems. Mm-hmm. But it, that Rocket Fuel is that relationship between the visionary and the implementer, okay. and how that you know, and how that relationship really can skyrocket a business. I'll tell you, um, I brought in my COO, his name is Will. And as when I brought him in, just things changed because I'm the visionary, but he's the, you know, he's the guy that's like, all right, how are we going to implement all of these ideas? Yep. I know you, this, you got a great, great, good job. Glad you have all these ideas. Mm-hmm. We can't do them all. Right. So he keeps me on track time wise, you know, how long these things are going to happen, what the expectations are and all of that. So it's really cool to have that. So I, I think it's a hundred percent, a hundred percent beneficial for somebody's business to have somebody like you, a COO type to help them with that, or maybe, you know, maybe providing so, some of that vision for them too. Cause it may be, they are the CEO, but they're more of an implementer and not necessarily the visionary. And so maybe you can, you know, do you provide some of that stuff too? Yes, absolutely. Cool. Well, all right. Well, tell them where they can find you in that camera right there. Oh, wonderful. Uh, my website is the successpartner.net. Uh, you can find us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I have a personal TikTok, day and day from one, I think, at TikTok. So That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you guys so much for being here. Spaghetti on the Wall has been brought to you by LaDuke Entertainment for all of your digital marketing needs, um, web design, video production, editing, social media management. We got you. And you can watch Spaghetti on the Wall or you can listen to Spaghetti on the Wall on Spotify, Apple Music, or anywhere you can find a podcast. Thank you so much, Daya Nath. We'll see y'all next week. Thank you.